Welcome back to DLS 105. This is Module 5, Demonstration of RMC QRA Calcs. RMC QRA Calcs is a suite of Microsoft Excel spreadsheets used to perform the risk calculations for typical dam and levy projects. After completing this module, course participants should be able to demonstrate how to use RMC QRA Calcs to perform the calculations for our risk assessment. We will start with an overview of the spreadsheets, then step through how to use each one individually. Homework 5 will be used as an example for each spreadsheet. Please have the homework file available and follow along as we go. We will begin with an overview of the spreadsheets. The RMC QRA Calc spreadsheets can be downloaded from the RMC website. Follow the address at the top of the screen, then click download. The spreadsheets will be combined in a single zip file. RMC QRA Calcs was developed to support risk assessments for dam and levy safety. These spreadsheet tools are used to calculate and assess the incremental risk, non-breach risk, and residual risk for typical dam and levy projects. There are four main spreadsheets. Data from RMC stage frequency distribution feeds into RMC PFM risk, which then feeds into RMC project risk. RMC risk summary and plots links with RMC project risk to plot the data. A fifth spreadsheet, RMC team elicitation worksheet, is an optional spreadsheet tool that can be used during a team elicitation to organize nodal estimates and to put them in the proper format to be copied and pasted into RMC PFM risk. starting with the stage frequency distribution spreadsheet. This spreadsheet is used to assign probability distributions so that we can replicate the stage frequency curve and its uncertainty from RMC RFA as best as possible in our analysis. Data from the spreadsheet will later be used in RMC PFM risk when completing risk calculations for a potential failure mode. To use the spreadsheet, macros must be enabled and the Excel add-on at risk is required. The yellow shaded cells are where the user data is input, and the white cells are built-in calculations. Whenever you are copying and pasting input data, always paste its values because many of the cells have conditional formatting to alert you when there is an error. The first step to using the spreadsheet is to select a vertical datum from the drop-down menu. If the datum you need is not listed, you can type it into the box. The elevation datum that is used must be consistent across all the different spreadsheets that will be used in the analysis. Next, input the 5th, 50th, and 95th percentile stage frequency relationships, along with the expected or mean stage frequency relationship into the tables. This data will be provided by your h, &H engineer and will typically come from RMC RFA. You are allowed 50 inputs. You may have to trim down the data you are given. If you must trim the data, be sure to include all inflection points when defining these relationships. The stages should be input from low to high without blanks or duplicates. When copying and pasting data, always paste as values. The maximum stage for all the different stage frequency relationships on this sheet must be consistent. This may require extending some of these curves through visual extrapolation. There is a plot below these tables that you can reference to make sure your visual extrapolation is reasonable. This is possibly the only time that extrapolation is a good idea. And in most instances, the probability that we are extrapolating to are going to be so low that they have essentially no impact on the risk assessment itself. Once you have the data input, verify that there are no errors. Input cell shading will turn red if there's an error in the relationship. The square in the top left corner of the sheet will also turn red if there is an error, and an error message will also appear next to the plot below the tables. The plot below the table should be used to verify the shape of the stage frequency relationships before moving on to the next tab in the spreadsheet. On the Probability Distribution tab, use the drop-down menus in column H to select the probability distribution for each stage. Options include beta pert, 
inverse Gaussian, and uniform distributions. To use the expected value without a distribution, do not pick anything from the dropdown. Just leave the cell blank. By default, the stages are set to be the same as those used to define the 50th percentile curve, and probabilities are interpolated for the other relationships. You can manually adjust the stages as necessary to account for known inflection points and to best define the stage frequency curve. The button at the top of the spreadsheet can be used to reset the spreadsheet to the default stages. Next, verify that there are no errors in column L. Typically, a beta PERT distribution will be the best place to start for all stages, but sometimes the data will not fit the distribution. The inverse Gaussian distribution usually does well for the upper pools that have a greater range of uncertainty when a beta PERT distribution cannot be used. Whatever distribution you use, the goal is for the distribution output to match the data provided by the H&H &H engineer as best as possible. After assigning the distributions, we now have everything we need to run a simulation. But before doing so, check the settings. The appropriate at-risk settings for government computers should be preset in the spreadsheet. The at-risk settings can be checked by clicking on the settings icon. Under the general tab, multiple CPU simulations should be disabled under the sampling tab, unless you are using a non-government computer or an air gap computer. Smart sensitivity analysis should also be disabled. The number of iterations should be set to at least 10,000. Click Simulate to begin the simulation. A dialog box will pop up related to the correlation matrices. Click Yes to continue the simulation. After running the analysis, click on Stage Frequency Plot tab to graphically view the results. The dashed lines on the plot are for the input data and the data markers are for the output data. We'll want to verify that the expected value output lines up with the expected value input. Sometimes the distribution outputs will not line up well with the expected value at the upper stages. This is usually because of how the curves were extrapolated to force each curve to reach the same maximum stage. If the expected value output data does not line up with the expected value input data, the extrapolation, or perhaps the assigned distribution, should be adjusted through trial and error to get the best fit possible. After running the simulation, you can use Explore Data and click the footprint to step through each iteration. Iteration results will plot as a gray line on the stage frequency plot when the footprint is checked. Please note that the table may have several columns of errors, but they're from unused distributions, so the errors are not a problem. The last step is to save the file. When you save the spreadsheet, a dialog box will pop up asking you how you want to save the simulation data. When files get large, it is best to save the data as an external file. Save the data file in the same folder as the spreadsheet. Here's where we will pick up with the Module 5 homework. We will start with RMC Stage Frequency Distribution Spreadsheet and use the data provided in the homework file. When you first open the spreadsheet, the About Worksheet will be selected. Start by going to the Cover Sheet Worksheet and typing in the project information. Next, go to the Stage Frequency Inputs Worksheet. This is where you will input the stage frequency relationships for the 5th percentile, the 50th percentile, the 95th percentile, and the expected or mean value. Inputs must go from lowest stage to highest stage, and all the relationships must go up to the same maximum stage. So, copy and paste from the 5th percentile relationship from the homework file and paste it as values into cell D10. Always paste as values because there is conditional formatting built into the sheet to help you identify errors in the input data. Repeat for the 50th percentile relationship. 
You can copy the stage and the 50th percentile relationship at the same time by selecting the stage data in column B, then pressing the control key and selecting the annual exceedance probability data in column D. Paste this values into cell H10. We'll then repeat the process for the 95th percentile. And then do the same for the expected or mean curve. You'll notice that the square in the top left corner is no longer red, indicating there are no longer any errors. Before all the data was input, the spreadsheet identified that data was missing, and because the data was missing, the relationships did not extend to the same peak stage. In practice, the relationships given to you by the H&H &H engineer will often not extend to the same peak stage, and you will have to extrapolate. This is the one time that extrapolation is okay because at the end of these curves, the annual exceedance probabilities are so low that they have negligible impact on the final risk estimate. Below the stage frequency tables is a plot where you can visually check your data. This plot is also helpful when extrapolating one or more of the curves. The next step occurs on the probability distribution worksheet, where, as its name implies, probability distributions will be assigned. You will need at risk to run the distributions, so execute the at risk software if you have not done so already. Once you have at risk loaded, you can select a distribution from the drop down for each peak stage. It is best to start with a beta PERT and check the values in column L. If the distribution works for the data, a number value will return. If not, an error will return. If a beta PERT distribution does not work, try inverse Gaussian. In this instance, beta PERT works for all the stages. Scrolling over, you may notice that the expected value in column Q does not match the input expected value in column G. This is because the simulation has not been run. Once you run the simulation, these numbers should be very close to one another. Before running a simulation, it is always a good idea to check your settings. If you are on a government computer, disable multiple CPU simulations from the General tab. From the Sampling tab, it is best to disable Smart Sensitivity Analysis for these worksheets. From here, click Simulate to run the simulation. A dialog box regarding the correlation matrix will appear. Click Yes to continue. The simulation should start and take about 10 to 15 seconds to run. Now, as you can see, the output expected value is nearly the same as the input expected value. You can also check the input versus the output graphically on the stage frequency plot worksheet. The lines correspond to the input data. The points correspond to the output data. As you can see, the output data plots on top of the input data, so we know we have successfully replicated the data given to us by the distributions we developed. When we move into the PFM risk spreadsheet, we will copy and paste from the first part of the table on the probability distribution worksheet. We'll discuss this more later, but we want the entire first six columns of data when we copy and paste, even if there are blank rows. RMC PFM risk is set up to be used during a team elicitation and is used to organize the data for a single potential failure mode that is a function of stage and that has an event tree of 10 nodes or less. The spreadsheet can be used to generate real-time results during a team elicitation. Values and formulas from the spreadsheet will later be used in RMC project risk when completing risk calculations for a project. 
To use the spreadsheet, macros must be enabled. The Excel add-on at risk is required to run a probabilistic analysis, but is not required to run a deterministic analysis. The yellow shaded cells are where the user will input data, and the white cells are built-in calculations. Gray cells do not require an input. Whenever you are copying and pasting input data, always paste as values because many of the cells are conditionally formatted. Also, to add reference lines on plots for key stages of interest, there is a table at the bottom of the cover sheet tab that you can fill out. For each worksheet, the top left corner will turn red if there's an error present in the worksheet. Sheets with errors will also be listed at the top of the Simulation Results tab worksheet. Also, the entire left side of all worksheets will turn red if the spreadsheet is populated with the at-rest simulation results. Always clear the simulation results prior to running a new simulation to shorten the runtime, because it will take at risk a very long time to start a simulation if you do not. Starting with the Hydrologic Hazard tab, select the vertical datum from the drop-down menu or type in the project datum into the box. Remember, the elevation datum must be consistent across all spreadsheets. Next, copy the inputs from the RMC Stage Frequency Distribution spreadsheet and paste these values into the table. Once that is complete, input the stage elevations lowest to highest that will be used to define the system response curve for the failure mode. If the system response probability has a known zero point, set the first stage to that elevation. You can always come back to this tab in the workbook to add more peak stages, but the low to high order must be maintained. There is also a plot of the stage frequency curve on this tab. Do not freak out if the mean at-risk markers do not plot on the expected curve at this point. They will not plot on the curve until after a simulation is run. Next, let's move to the life loss tab. Here, input the day and night exposure rates. Remember the exposures must sum to equal one. Next, select a life loss distribution, then click Execute to populate the other worksheets. You can choose between Beta General, Beta PERT, Triangular, and Uniform distributions. Of these, Beta PERT and Triangular distributions have been the ones most commonly used. More recently, risk assessment teams have been using percentile sampling, which samples the consequence data directly, instead of trying to find a representative distribution. This is also an option in the drop-down menu and has become the preferred method because it best recreates the results from the consequence model. In this worksheet, the table headers and cells that are shaded yellow to denote a user input will change based on the requirements of the distribution. Unused cells will be grayed out. Next, input breach life loss estimates for day and night. The estimates need to be input in order from lowest stage to highest stage. If the distribution is not selected, the spreadsheet will default to the most likely value. Scrolling down within the same worksheet, we'll do the same thing for the non-breach life loss, inputting the estimates in order from the lowest stage to the highest stage. If you want to use a static value for a given stage instead of a selected distribution, override the mean value for that stage and leave all other columns blank. This can be done in the breach life loss table as well. Inputting the economic cost is also done in a similar fashion. The estimates for breach and non-breach are input in order from lowest stage to highest stage. Uncertainty in the economic cost is typically not considered, so there are no options for distributions. The peak stages for economic cost inputs should be the same as the peak stages for the life loss inputs from the prior worksheet. We are now ready to start with the nodal estimates. At the top of the node worksheet, select the node type, failure, or intervention. Next, click on the peak stage at the top left corner of the table. This will populate the table with the peak stages to evaluate from the hydrologic loading tab. You can also use the drop-down to select the stages manually. The stages you evaluate for a given node do not have to be the same as those for other nodes. The only requirement is that the lowest and highest stages are the same for all nodes so that the spreadsheet can interpolate properly. 
on this worksheet are tables to record and summarize the elicitation responses. It is beneficial to have each elicitor use the RMC team elicitation template and email the results to the spreadsheet operator. That template is formatted specifically to be used with the spreadsheet, such that the spreadsheet operator can simply copy and paste the results as values into the table. This is much more efficient than trying to manually type in the elicited responses. If a second response is necessary, input those as well in the next table. For the second response, the cells are conditionally formatted to indicate a change from the first response. Green cells indicate a decrease from the first elicited probability, and the red cells indicate an increase. Summary statistics are tabulated at the bottom. The inner quartile is known as the middle 50, and it is the difference between the 25th and 75th percentile values. The lower this number, the tighter the spread of the elicited responses. A decrease in the inner quartile value is an indicator that the elicitation panel is moving towards a consensus. As a default, the spreadsheet reports the median of the elicited probabilities for the lowest reasonable, most likely, and highest reasonable values. But the drop-down box can be used to toggle between the median and the average of the elicited probabilities. The last table of each node worksheet is the place to input the consensus probabilities and to choose a representative probability distribution. This will be done by the elicitation team. Available probability distributions include triangular, uniform, log triangular, and log uniform. If a stage represents a zero threshold for the PFM, enter a zero for the lowest reasonable, most likely, and highest reasonable values. Once the consensus probabilities are input, verify that how the probabilities change with stage and that the selected probability distribution is appropriate. The consensus elicitation results and PDS for each pool are plotted below the consensus team estimate table and will be shown on the next slide. Here is a look at the plots included on each node worksheet. The probabilities are plotted with stage and the probability density function for the selected distribution is also provided. For the PDF, use the drop down menu to choose the stage elevation for the probability density function you want to display. Once all the data has been input, move on to the risk calculations worksheet. Here you will select an interpolation method from the drop down menu to be used for the system response. Options include linear, semi logarithmic, and z variant. You will also need to verify the life loss correlation matrices used in the worksheet. The spreadsheet defaults to perfect correlation between breach and non breach life loss. To make the life loss distributions perfectly uncorrelated, click the plus button on the left to show the matrices, then change the bottom left hand portion of the matrices boxed in red. You'll change the values from 1 to 0 for both the day and night tables. Scrolling down in the risk calculations worksheet, you have the option to include non exceedance. Even further down is where the user will choose between a probabilistic and deterministic analysis. If you choose deterministic, only the mean estimates will be calculated. To calculate uncertainty, probabilistic should be selected and at risk will be required to perform the analysis. To finish setting up the analysis, you will also need to set the loading partitions to evaluate. By default, the spreadsheet generates even partitions between the minimum and maximum stage of the stage frequency curve. These partitions can be changed to provide additional resolution around key elevations. It is important to note, however, that the same set of stage partitions should be used for all potential failure modes for a given project. If all steps were done correctly, everything should be set and ready to go. As part of the final check, go to the simulation results worksheet to verify that there are no errors and that the simulation results are clear. If the simulation results have not been cleared, click the Clear Simulation Result button. Before running a simulation, it is always good practice to check the settings. The appropriate at-risk settings for a government computer should be preset in the spreadsheet, 
but these settings can be checked by clicking on the settings icon. Under the general tab, multiple CPU support should be disabled unless you're using a non-government computer or an air gap computer. Under the sampling tab, smart sensitivity analysis should also be disabled. Pick how many iterations you want, then click simulate to begin the simulation. A dialog box will pop up related to the correlation matrices. When it does, click yes to continue the simulation. After the simulation is complete, which may take a little bit depending on the selected number of iterations, click plot simulation results on the simulation results worksheet to populate all the plots and tables. After running a simulation, you can use Explore Data and click the footprint to plot and cycle through the iteration results. Use the arrow keys to move from one iteration to the next. The last step is to save the file. When you save the spreadsheet, a dialog box will pop up asking you how you want to save the simulation data. When files get large, it is best to save the data as an external file. Save the data file in the same folder as the spreadsheet. Continuing with homework five, we will next open up RMC PFM Risk. On the cover page, you can input project information. You can also input nodal descriptions. Whatever you input under the description for a node, will show up on the header for the node in the corresponding node worksheet. Also on the cover sheet is a table to input elevations of interest, like top of active storage or the embankment crest. Inputs into this table will appear as reference lines on applicable plots. Moving to the hydrologic hazard worksheet. Here's where we will paste data from the RMC stage frequency distribution spreadsheet. Copy the entire first six rows of data, all the way down to the very bottom of the table, whether there is data there or not. And paste its values into cell C10. Next, input the peak stages used to evaluate the system response. These can be found on the homework file for PFM1. The pools are the same for all nodes, so we can copy the first set from node 1 and paste special as transposed values to get the inputs in the correct place. The list of values is shown here. If you leave a stage out, you can always go back later and add stages, but they must always be input in order from low to high. Moving on to the Life Loss tab. First, input the exposure probabilities. Next, we are told to use a beta PERT distribution for the consequences. So we will select beta PERT distribution from the dropdown and click Execute. The table will then be set up for you to input your data. For the day breach life loss, copy the peak stages from the homework file and paste its values in column D. Next, copy the rest of the table. Once you paste the data in as values, the mean will auto-populate. Keep in mind different distributions have different inputs, so the tables will change based on the distribution selected. After copying and pasting, here's the completed breach life loss tables for day and night. After repeating the process for the non-breach life loss, you should get what is shown here. Next, we need to input the economic cost data. Copy the breach economic cost from the homework file. 
and paste its values into the top table. Copy the non breach values from the homework file and paste its values into the bottom table. From here, we are ready to input the nodal estimates. Each node worksheet is set up for a team elicitation. There's a drop down at the top for whether the node is a failure or intervention node. In row 9, peak stages to evaluate are chosen. You can use the drop downs in each cell to select a peak stage, or you can pull in all the ones input on the hydrologic hazard worksheet by clicking where it says peak stage. The pointer will turn into a hand when you are in the right place. So, clicking on peak stage brings in the stages we defined earlier. The table here is where the elicited values would go. Because we are given the final nodal estimates, we can scroll down to the next table where the consensus estimate is input. To populate this table, we will need to select a distribution, click Execute, and then input our data into the yellow cells. The homework file tells us to use a triangular distribution for each node. Select Triangular Distribution Stage Dependent from the drop-down menu. Then click Execute to set up the Risk Calculation Spreadsheet. The error will disappear and you will be set up to input the data. Copy the Node 1 data for PFM1 from the homework file. Paste its values into the table. Once the data is in there, the relationships will be plotted below. It is recommended to review this plot to make sure the relationship looks reasonable and that the probabilities change appropriately with stage. Scrolling down, there is another plot where you can view the probability density functions of the distributions estimated for each stage. Use the drop down to the right to select the stage to plot. Repeat that procedure for each of the remaining nodes. Here is the Node 2 team estimate. For Node 3, be sure to select Intervention as the node type. Here is the completed Node 3 table. And finally, the completed Node 4 table. Once all the nodal estimates have been input, click on the Risk Calculations Worksheet. The first table is the Team Elicitation Summary, which pulls in the data from the nodal worksheets. The next set of tables is where the System Response Probabilities are calculated. Use the drop-down to select an interpolation method. Because PFM1 is in overtopping failure mode, we will select Linear. The next table in the worksheet is for the stage frequency. You will see the input data from earlier, the selected distribution, and a place for the output. The highlighted cells in column L will be blank initially because the spreadsheet's default setting is for a deterministic analysis. These values will populate when we change from a deterministic to a probabilistic analysis later. To the right, the user can specify if non-exceedance is to be included. It is included by default, and because we want to include it, we do not need to click anything. Scrolling down further, you will find the Exposure and Consequences tables. In row 411 is where you will choose the type of analysis, deterministic or probabilistic. You will need to have at risk installed on your computer and running to run a probabilistic analysis.
to change the analysis type, the column in the stage frequency table I mentioned earlier will populate. Like we saw in the stage frequency distribution spreadsheet, the input and output expected values will not match or be close to one another at all stages until the simulation is run. The spreadsheet will automatically discretize the hazard into even intervals. You can override the stage partitions by editing the stages in the yellow cells under stage partitions, but the stages must be input low to high. From there, you are ready to run the simulation. The homework file tells us to use 1000 iterations. After clicking simulate, multiple dialog boxes will pop up. Click yes for both. The simulation should take a couple minutes to run. Once complete, review the table of results under Risk Mean. As you can see, these values are close to those we saw for the deterministic analysis. The more iterations you do, the closer the probabilistic result will be to the deterministic estimate. Scrolling down and to the right, there are a couple tables where you can see the contribution of specific stage ranges. If you want to look at different stage ranges, you can choose from the drop-down, but stages must be ordered from low to high. The results will be plotted on the Simulation Results tab. To pull in the simulation data, click Plot Simulation Results near the top of the spreadsheet. The sidebar will turn red to show that the simulation results are populated. There are also several risk plots, including the FN scatter plot and simulation results statistics that you can explore. The RMC Project Risk Spreadsheet is used to calculate the marginal risk for each potential failure mode and to combine these risks to calculate the total risk. As with the other spreadsheets, macros must be enabled and the Excel add-on at risk is required to run a probabilistic analysis. The yellow shaded cells are where values are to be pasted from the RMC PFM risk spreadsheet. Yellow shaded cells outlined in red are where formulas are to be pasted from the RMC PFM risk spreadsheet. The spreadsheet can accommodate up to 10 potential failure modes. Starting on the cover sheet tab, input PFM numbers and short descriptions for the failure modes into the table. Worksheets for each potential failure mode will appear automatically, but the failure mode numbers must be unique and the PFMs must be input one at a time. Next, select the vertical datum from the drop-down menu on the right, or just type in the project datum into the box. The elevation data must be consistent across all spreadsheets. Moving to the PFM worksheets. The data for these worksheets will come directly from the RMC PFM risk spreadsheet that you filled out for each failure mode. To start bringing in the data, copy the team elicitation summary from the risk calculations tab of the RMC PFM risk spreadsheet and paste these values into cell C6. Copy the entire table, not just the stages and the nodes that have data. Select an interpolation method for the PFM from the drop-down menu. Options include linear, semi-logarithmic, and z-variant. Next, copy the Considering Intervention Nodal Estimate table from the RMC PFM risk spreadsheet and paste these formulas into cell F70. Again, this time we are pasting formulas, not values, because the cells are outlined in a red box. For the next table, copy the Annual Exceedance Probability Input table and the Assigned Probability Distributions from the RMC PFM risk spreadsheet and paste its values into cell C209. For the PFM consequences, copy the exposure rates from the RMC PFM risk spreadsheet 
and paste into cell D321. Select a distribution to match using the drop-down menu and click Execute. Copy the breach life loss, non-breach life loss, and economic tables from the RMC PFM risk spreadsheet and paste into the RMC project risk spreadsheet. If you are using percentile sampling, the input tables will be to the right of the table shown here, but the procedure is essentially the same. If necessary, update the correlation matrices in the RMC project risk spreadsheet to match those to the RMC PFM risk spreadsheet. In continuing to work down the PFM worksheet, use the buttons to add or remove the non-exceedance. Then, copy the stage partitions from the RMC PFM risk spreadsheet and paste them into cell C430. This completes the input for the first failure mode. If other potential failure modes are being evaluated, go to the worksheet for the next PFM. Click the button in the top left corner to set up the worksheet. The button will change from a triangle to an X. The spreadsheet can be cleared of all formulas by pressing the X. All unused sheets should be cleared for formulas prior to running an at-risk simulation. From here, repeat the prior steps for all other PFMs. Just note that the loading and the non-breach consequences will already be populated in the worksheet. Once all the data for each potential failure mode has been entered, the last thing we need to do is to go to the SRP Adjustments tab to assign how the potential failure modes will be combined. Use the drop-down menu to choose a risk model and, if necessary, to assign a dominant failure mode. Only one failure mode can be dominant. If a failure mode is dominant, the other failure modes cannot occur unless the dominant failure mode does not occur. A dominant failure mode can only be chosen for the exclusive and common cause adjustment risk models. A dominant failure mode cannot be assigned when using the competing risk model. Next, you have the option to make adjustments to combine similar failure modes. If the same potential failure mode is evaluated in multiple sections, or multiple exit locations are evaluated for the same failure path, the individual system response curve should be combined into a single curve by selecting the maximum system response probability at each peak stage. To combine similar failure modes in this manner, write an if statement for each stage to assign the failure mode with the maximum system response probability, a 1, and the other failure mode of the group, a value of 0. If a given failure mode is not being combined with any others as described above, assign a value of 1 for each stage. You'll need to do this for both tables, with and without intervention. We now have everything we need to run a simulation, but before doing so, check the settings. The appropriate at-risk settings for a government computer should be preset in the spreadsheet but the at-risk settings can be checked by clicking on the settings icon. Under the general tab, multiple CPU simulations should be disabled unless you're using a non-government computer or an air gap computer. Under the sampling tab, smart sensitivity analysis should also be disabled. The number of iterations should be set to at least 10,000. Click simulate to begin the simulation. Two dialog boxes will pop up. Click yes both times to continue the simulation. After running the simulation, you can review the tabular results on the incremental, non-breach, and residual risk tabs. But to plot the simulation results, you'll need to use the risk summary and plots template. When you save the spreadsheet, a dialog box will pop up asking you how you want to save the simulation data. When files get large, it is best to save the data as an external file. Save the data file in the same folder as the spreadsheet. Once we have created PFM risk spreadsheets for each failure mode, we need to pull all that data into the project risk spreadsheet to calculate the total project risk. On the cover sheet, input the project information and the potential failure modes. A worksheet will appear for each PFM you enter. The PFMs must be entered by hand, so do not copy and paste into the table. For 
Each PFM worksheet will be set up the same as what we saw from the PFM risk spreadsheet. We will be copying and pasting from the PFM risk spreadsheet into the project risk spreadsheet, starting with the SRP table under Team Elicitation Summary. Copy the entire summary table from the PFM risk worksheet. Be sure to go all the way to the bottom of the table. Paste its values into the corresponding table in the RMC Project Risk Spreadsheet. Scrolling down, choose the interpolation method under System Response Probabilities, which was linear for PFM1 overtopping. Next, we need to pull in the Considering Intervention formulas in the highlighted table. We will copy all the node cells from the table in the PFM risk spreadsheet. Then paste this formulas into cell F70 of the RMC project risk spreadsheet. Once you do that, you should get the following values. Moving down to the stage frequency inputs. Copy the data from the PFM risk spreadsheet. Be sure to copy the entire table, even rows without data. Paste its values into the corresponding RMC project risk table, and then click Execute to load the specified distributions. We will do the same thing for the exposure, breach consequences, and non-breach consequences. Copy the data from the RMC PFM risk spreadsheet and paste its values into the RMC project risk spreadsheets per the instructions shown. Use the dropdown in cell H328 to select a distribution, beta pert in this instance, and click execute. Here are the resulting breach tables. And here are the resulting non-breach tables. Next, we will need to pull in the stages from the PFM risk spreadsheet to define the stage partitions. Copy those from the PFM risk spreadsheet. Paste its values into the yellow cells under stage partitions. Remember that each failure mode must have the same stage partitions if the spreadsheet is going to calculate the risk correctly. If we have at risk, we want to do a probabilistic analysis, so we will choose probabilistic from the dropdown. That completes the setup for the first potential failure mode. We will repeat this process for the remaining potential failure modes. To set up the worksheet for subsequent failure modes, click the triangle in the top left corner. Doing so will pull in all the necessary formulas and get the spreadsheet ready for your inputs. Once complete, the triangle will change to an X. Clicking the X will delete the formulas in the worksheet. Once you have copied and pasted all the PFM inputs into all the PFM spreadsheets, click on the SRP Adjustments tab to choose a risk model. Choices include the Exclusive Risk Model, the Common Cause Risk Model, and the Competing Risk Model. For the homework, choose Competing Risk Model as indicated in the homework file and click Execute. Scrolling down, there will be a table of the unadjusted system response probabilities, followed by a table where you can write an if statement to take the maximum and combine similar failure mechanisms. Since we have all different mechanisms, an if statement is not required, and a 1 is entered for each stage of each failure mode. Be sure to fill out both tables, with and without intervention.
The final table in the worksheet will have the adjusted system response probabilities. Once that is complete, we are now ready to run the simulation. We will use 1000 iterations for this example. Again, disable multiple CPUs and disable smart sensitivity analysis. Click yes when the first dialog box about the correlation matrix appears. Click yes again when the second dialog box about the correlation matrix appears. The simulation should take less than 10 minutes to run. The analysis is complete. You can view the incremental, non-breach, and residual results. Each have their own worksheet. Here are the incremental risk results. Here are the non-breach risk results. And finally, the residual risk results. The mean estimates are summarized by flood risk component and potential failure mode on the risk summary worksheet. The RMC risk summary and plot spreadsheet links with the RMC project risk spreadsheet and summarize the risk assessment results in tables and plots. To use the spreadsheet, macros must be enabled. The RMC project risk spreadsheet must be open at the same time as this spreadsheet, and at risk must be running if a probabilistic analysis was performed. To add reference lines on plots for key stages of interest, Fill out the table at the bottom of the cover sheet tab. Each worksheet is formatted for printing. When printing to a PDF, use Microsoft Print to PDF for best results. To start, type in the file name of the RMC Project Risk Spreadsheet with its file extension into the box. It needs to be an exact match. If you change the file name, it will be different than what is shown in the example. The list of risk driver potential failure modes will populate once you have properly linked to the correct spreadsheet. The RMC project risk spreadsheet must also be open for the links to work. On the PFM risk summary tab, use the drop down menu to select the PFM. The tables and plots will update automatically after a PFM is selected. If you want to print the data for a potential failure mode, Click the Update Header button before doing so. Please note it may take a few minutes for the macro to finish running. On the Total Risk Summary tab, the spreadsheet will automatically plot the little FN chart with Uncertainty Scatter, the big FN chart, the individual risk, and CDFs for the annual probability of failure, average annual life loss, and average annual economic cost. The only plot that requires additional user input is the plot of the individual risk, as shown here. The user must input the fatality rate for the person or persons most at risk. To plot the results for the homework, we need both the RMC Risk Summary and Plots Worksheet and the RMC Project Risk Worksheet open at the same time. On the cover sheet, type in your project information. Under Link Spreadsheet Name, include the exact name of the RMC Project Risk file, including the file extension. Once input, the summary spreadsheet will pull in from the Project Risk Spreadsheet and the PFM table will populate. There is a tab that pulls in the hydrologic hazard input and output data. and plots the data together. There's a tab for the non-breach consequence tables and plots. And there's a tab for the PFM risk summary. The drop down at the top is used to choose what PFM to view. To update the header on the sheet, 
Click the Update Header button in the corner to get the spreadsheet ready for printing. Plots include the mean system response, the FN scatter plot, and several others. The total risk summary pulls in the total risk for the project. The mean risk estimates for the total risk and the marginals for each PFM are plotted together on the FN chart. There is the FN scatter plot and simulation statistics. The individual risk plot. The loan input on this worksheet is for the individual most at risk. The spreadsheet requires you to input the fatality rate for the person or group most at risk from LifeSim. You can also get the probability distribution of life loss for the incremental, non-breach, and residual scenarios. You can explore several other plots as well, including CDFs and risk profile plots. This concludes Module 5 of the course. Please complete the rest of Homework 5 to get credit for the module. If you do not have access to a working copy of At Risk, complete the calculations using the deterministic option within the spreadsheet. Once complete, take a screenshot of the FN chart and send it to rmctraining at usace.army.mil with the subject as DLS 105 Homework 5 to help us keep track of the submittals. Thanks in advance for your cooperation. If you have trouble with the homework, please reach out to the instructors through the email address on the screen or by emailing us directly. We will go over the solution to the homework assignment during the live question and answer portion, which will be in a few weeks. Also, at the end of the live session, you will be asked to take a short quiz so we can give you credit for your participation. If you missed the live session, a recording will be posted to the RMC website. The quiz will stay open until the day of the next live session. Please check the course schedule for dates and times. See you again for Module 6.